Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Deborah Peart, and I am a student recruitment officer with the University of Toronto Mississauga campus. And I am absolutely ecstatic to be joining you this evening. And I want to thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your day to come and watch what we have to say about psychology in our U of T Mississauga program spotlight. So now it's very important that the first thing we do is in fact do a land acknowledgement. So if we could do a quick land acknowledgement. Had it right there, Jody. Jody's with us. I'm going to introduce Jody in a second. She's got this. So I'd like to do a quick land acknowledgement to acknowledge the land that we are on currently. So we wish to acknowledge this land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. Now, once again, I'm Deborah Peart. I am a student recruit recruitment officer with the University of Toronto Mississauga, and this evening we are spotlighting psychology. And we're going to be joined by experts within psychology who want to share with you the programs that they have. Now, we have Jody. Jody, how are you? Jody is the academic counselor for psychology. We also have with us a little bit later on, so Jody's going to present information about psychology. Then a little bit later on, we're going to have Professor Graham, who's going to explain to you what the lab is like for psychology as well, what your laboratory experience will be. Then after Professor Graham, we're going to be hearing from the student panel. We've got Joyce, we've got Vanessa, and we have Sophia who's going to be talking about their student experience in psychology. And I don't wanna forget, Mary Grace is also on the back end as well, who's going to be providing information about psychology. Now, I really want to encourage you to put your questions into the Q&A. Let us know what your questions are because I've got Alicia. She's in the background and she's going to be answering questions for you with regard to admissions. And she's also going to be passing questions on to me to ask the panelists a little bit later on. So Jody, are you ready to get started? Uh, yes, I am, welcome. Thank you, Deborah. that was a great introduction. I'll be back later, Jody. Great, thank you. Uh, so yes, thank you for uh, taking the time tonight in this beautiful day uh, to sit and listen to what we have to say. Um, so you probably research psychology, I hope, uh, at UTM. We are science. And you'll see here, these are just areas of study. So we have like 27 full-time faculty that actually do active research in psychology. You know, their peer reviews, they have active labs, they have grants. So these are, you're working with top-notch scientists working in the field of psychology uh, with current events, what's going on with COVID, they're, they're looking into that. Uh, but our areas of study, so we have, you know, faculty specialists in the developmental area, neuroscience, health and well-being, perception, cognition. So when you, when you come here, you're going to get a big, broad experience of psychology as a science and uh, really kind of understand pretty much yourself. I mean, Jeff will get into that when he talks about the labs on, on what we kind of go over in psychology. Um, but just so you can maybe take a screenshot of this, so you can reach out to me at any time. I'm available all year round and I'm available all summer. If you have any questions with regards to your courses or what um, areas of study you might be interested in, you can contact me at any time. Uh, Mary Grace is our undergraduate assistant, uh, so she worked with me closely to assist uh, all the students and the faculty. She's also the Psych 100 coordinator. So Psych 100 is our first year psychology course. We only have one first year psychology course, so this will be it. This will be your one credit. This is all you'll need to take to ever get into a psychology program. That's just regular psychology. If you wanted to get into something else, neuroscience or exceptionality, you would need to maybe take different other first year courses. So Psych 100 and then you can populate your, your other courses with whatever else you're interested in or what, what you're coming to UTM to study. 
So uh, what, what do I need from high school? So you've probably already have gone through this. You've probably been screened, but if you, you, you didn't apply through a psych stream and you're still interested, uh, you just need the 4U biology, the 4U advanced functions or equivalent to wherever you're taking high school. So if you're not sure what the equivalent is, uh, admissions will be happy to help you to look at your record to make sure you do have those high school prerequisites. The minimum grade of 70, that's for admissions. I mean, we don't look at that uh, when you're taking our courses, we don't look at your high school grades, but that's just something that when these are required courses for admission that they, you have to have the minimum 70. Uh, and what degree do you get? So we are science. So unfortunately U of T doesn't offer uh, an arts, a BA in psychology, we are hard science. So we are kind of on the, under the umbrella of life sciences. So you will get a, a bachelor, honors, honors Bachelor of Science if you complete a psychology specialist or a psychology major. So for sure you would get the Honors Bachelor of Science. Uh, so what programs do we offer? We have an exceptionality in human learning. So that's more applied and, and works with uh, students with giftedness, disabilities. Uh, and it goes, you do courses in sociology, biology, anthropology. So it's a very broad program. It's only offered as a specialist, but you know, we, a lot of students who get into that, they, they go into maybe clinical psychology. We offer our neuroscience program and then our psychology general program. So um, specialists uh, for our program. So out of your 20 credits that you need to complete to get your degree, it ranges between these specialists, they range between 10 to 12 credits that would take up your 20. Uh, if you want to do a major, you would just do a double major and that's only six and a half out of your 20 and then you could, you know, pick another major that would complement that or something that's just totally different like English and you just want to complement that with your English studies. So you could do biology, sociology, economics, you know, the, it's a broad range of double majors. Majority of the students, about 80% of the students at UTM do, 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 sorry, do double majors. Just because you're getting that broad experience at the undergraduate level, you want to get as much education and background as possible and then start focusing on uh, what you want to do after you graduate, whether it be higher education or go into your, your career. And then we do offer a minor and these are just students who are just really interested in psychology and they just want to get more information in the second and third year courses. And that is, uh, so that's about four credits out of your, your, your 20. Okay, so declaring your program. So once you, you're admitted to UTM, you're just a, a first year student. Whether you come in psych stream, life science stream, social science stream, you're basically a first year student. It's kind of, I kind of refer to it like grade nine. You know, you're starting your, your new education at this level, you, you kind of take first year courses to really see what do I want to do, especially psychology, you know, we students, Kind of come in with a misconception if they haven't done their research with it and they don't realize that it is a research program. You do have to do statistics. Your, your class, your courses will have a research paper component with pretty much every single class at first year, second, third year. Uh, so that's why we, the, the, we only have the one first year course. So you get an idea of really what you're going to experience as you move forward in the psychology program. So these are just requirements to get into these programs after your first year. So if you wanted to do a minor, you'd need to get at least a 61 in your first year psychology course with an annual GPA of 2.0, which is all of your courses that you take for the, your first year. For the major, you need at least a 64, uh, same GPA. And then the specialist, these are what you would go into after your second year. So then you would do another year of psychology courses. You, you would make sure you take the requirements that are required. Then we would assess you and you, you'd need a 77 and a 3.0 GPA. The reason we do the specialist at the second year is coming after first year, you may get like a 90 in psychology. You're, you know, you're, you think you're very strong. Then as you progress and you start doing statistics and you start doing more research in it, it maybe that's really not your strength. So we found students, once they do a second year, they really have a really good idea of what they will do. And that's when they decide if they want to maybe opt out of the major and go into the specialist. But we walk you through all of that with, with registrar's office, departments, we have information sessions. This isn't something you really need to worry about right now. 
it's just, I always say, come in, enjoy your experience, enjoy first year site, take as much out of it as possible, and then start making your decisions and then start worrying about these grades. Uh, and then what is psychology? So again, I, like I mentioned, there is a misconception sometimes, uh, you know, students come in, they may take it in high school, high school may be at a different level, they may do it more of their art. So they study a lot of Freud, which you will in, in psychology with us, but we are a scientific uh, research program. So it's pretty much the scientific study of behavior. Anything that an animal does, feels or thinks, and that includes us. So we, we are considered an animal. So basically, you know, you, you have these questions. Usually people who come into psychology, they have that first uh, questions, you know, why do infants learn? How do they learn language? Uh, how does social status change the brain? Uh, why do some relationships thrive while others fail? Good questions. We try to find out. Can music make you smarter? I mean, that's something that I think has been studied for a very long time. And I think there is no real data to say for sure, but we, we do say the earlier you start that, you know, your IQ tends to be a bit higher, but that's up for debate. You can prove me wrong. <laughs> so first year psychology. So you're going to meet Dr. Graham tonight. He's actually going to show you kind of what goes on in the Psych 100 labs. Uh, so Dr. Dax, he does, does your lectures. So for Psych 100, you will meet once a week for two hours in a class with Dax. He will go over the topics of the, the course, break it down to you, explain it. And then you break down, you go into smaller groups, you choose a lab and that's like max 80 students in those labs. And you really, you just sit meet with Jeff or tutorial leaders and they go over kind of what you learned and apply it to uh, in, in a computer setting, you use uh, Snippy, he'll introduce Snippy to you, Snippy the rat. Uh, so that's pretty much, those will be your first props for Psych 100, when, you, when you come in and take Psych 100. Uh, and they will either turn you on or off of psychology. Uh, but like I said, we, we've been very successful with, with this, this course. And students who even are taking it as just their science, they didn't you know, think that they wanted to do psychology. When we look at the statistics, we do see that students change their mind after a first year and they say, hey, wait, yeah, no, I want to do psychology. Uh, so we, we, we feel Dax and Jeff are great. They're very approachable. And uh, you'll, you'll see that tonight with Dr. Jeff. So learning outcomes, I mean, you'll get a course outline at the beginning of the year that will explain a lot of this. So you identify key concepts, principles, and approaches in psychology. Describe how developmental, experimental, and biological factors interact and shape the mental process. Uh, access and interpret scientific, scientific literature. So that's very important uh, trait and quality that you'll learn. And the one that I really, I find that really attracts students to psychology is, you know, the insights of behavior, mental health on oneself or others. We, you know, as, you know, social beings and who we are, we, we tend to always try to analyze and, and ask questions, or, you know, why do they do that? Or why do I do that? Why do I procrastinate? You know, so the, the, I, I find people who come into psychology, it's, it's those everyday questions that they ask themselves or family members that maybe have mental illness and they, they really want to get a scientific understanding of, of why. So this is that you actually do experiments in your first year, you actually get to participate in active research uh, and you get credit for that within Psych 100. And the topics we do, perception, cog uh, consciousness, memory and cognition, motivation, personality, intelligence, psychological disorders, treatments, everything and anything. So it's a very broad scientific uh, overview of psychology. And they, we do go back into the past, but we do a lot of active current research. So it's very trendy and uh, interesting to, to all the students who are coming to learn. Uh, so yeah, you get to participate in research very early in psychology. And so after your first year, you can apply to a research opportunity course. So our faculty list, you know, they have projects that they, you, you could maybe apply to 
working in their lab and contributing to those projects. And then we have independent research projects in your third and fourth year, uh, thesis in your fourth year if you choose to do a specialist or you wanna to go to graduate school and you need that, that criteria. Uh, we have a, a placement course in exceptionality in, in human learning, uh, which is done in your fourth year. And, and majors can do those as well. You don't have to be a specialist to, to do these courses. And then careers. So careers, you know, especially in psychology, uh, as a parent, uh, you know, parents always say psychology, what, what kind of job can you get with that? What are you going to do with that? You know, there's, I don't, you know, you're not a teacher, you're not a doctor, you're not a lawyer. But I mean, psychology, as you know, because it's, it's the study of, of why we do things. So having a background in psychology, whether you're going in to be a teacher, uh, whether you're going into financial, you know, you're working in a bank, you know, having psychology as a, a background and understanding it, it it's actually very uh, positive for you. And it's actually a, a good um, thing to have when you when you're applying to these jobs, they that people are actually interested to say, oh, wait, you studied psychology, that's interesting. So it's also a good icebreaker in your interviews. And then you have that knowledge to back what you're really seeing and you're contributing to to these jobs. But you know, you go, you can go into clinical and counseling, uh, social work, drug and alcohol abuse counselor, research assistant, a police officer, probation officer. You can get into forensics, uh, health psychology. So it's it's a very broad range. And at our career center, we do have a uh, they've done a great job with putting together, you know, jobs by program. So they 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 put up there what students have gone into with undergraduate degrees, like actual jobs and positions and employers. So there's actually, you know, I think it's a very good thing to have, whether even just as an undergrad that you're, you, you do kind of have a step ahead, some students who are just coming out with maybe a BA, having that psychology as your, um, under your belt is, you know, we found that employers really appreciate it. So that's it for me. I just, I, I know I went very quickly, but I just want to give uh, the panel and Dr. Jeff more opportunity to speak. But if there is any questions, I, I, I can answer them real quick. Maybe if not, we can go on to Jeff. So uh, Jody, I don't think we have any questions, but I want to say something to everyone. Jody would be your academic advisor. And she is an absolute expert when it comes to psychology. Jody holds the keys of knowledge. Jody, thank you very much. Thank you, Deborah. And, and Jody's thank going to be coming back. So please, if you don't have any questions for her right now, just remember you can throw them in to the Q&A. So now we have Professor Graham, who's going to be talking about your lab experience in psychology. And I'll be back later on. Hello, everybody. I have a slideshow prepared for you. Uh, I've, um, my name is Dr. Jeff Graham. I've been running the labs in Psych 100 at UTM for, for a few years now. And um, we have a dedicated computer lab. This, was, this is an older picture. We have uh, 85 IMAX in Deerfield Hall. And my office is right beside there. And what we do in intro psych is we want to let you know how we study the science of behavior. And it boils down to learning how to do experiments. Essentially, we want to be able to prove causation. We want to be able to test our theories. So we actually have you come every other week for 10 labs. Um, and I'm going to just give you a little sampler of the labs that we do in Psych 100. It's a lot of fun when I have all 84 people in the lab because I can sort of read eyeballs and see how people are understanding. Um, but this year we've been doing it on Zoom and it's working very well. I'm hoping we'll see you guys in intro psych on campus at UTM in the fall, but we're still, we're still praying for that. So let me explain that to do research methods, we wanna essentially have you experience an, an experiment, collect some data on yourself, graph your results for topics that kind of parallel what you're reading about in, in the textbook and you're hearing from Professor Dax Erbsat in his lectures. And so in the first term, we have five labs, that's every other week. And it's a two hour lab where you have uh, a little bit of an introduction that's, that I'm gonna uh, give you a little bit of a taste of. But really the job is for you to run the experiment, 
uh, as a subject and be able to collect the data after you've finished and graph it. So, so I'm gonna show you um, the first lab that we do every year is called the Stroop Interference Task. And uh, this is fun because um, it, you can really feel your brain slow down when you're trying to respond as fast as you can. I'm gonna give you a chance to experience that in a minute. And um, some other topics, I may not spend too much time on it, but we're, we're very interested in how we can develop critical thinking. Like how can we uh, test your ability to evaluate a situation and, and form your own judgment? And we've developed a new form of multiple choice questions where you don't just pick the best one, you actually have to rank order them and say, this is best, this is second best, this is worse, et cetera. And um, so we have a little experiment that we do in the second lab. But as we move on through the textbook, we're now going to, you're going to be hearing a lot about the brain and all the perceptual systems and how the eyes work and how we can figure out depth perception. And we actually run a lab where we measure the size of an optical illusion. And um, so I'll show you that data in a minute. Uh, Jody mentioned we do have some Freud and Jung in our intro psych course. And, and it, you know, it, it comes again later in personality and counseling psychology. But we have you learn how to analyze dreams. And um, uh, I'll tell you uh, just a touch about that in a minute. And, and also I wanna highlight Sniffy the Virtual Rat was, was actually a piece of software we developed at UTM uh, where we filmed one of the animals from the vivarium. So when my colleagues do research with animals, there is a, a little part of the building where all the animals are kept and, and kept safely and fed properly. And so Sniffy was taken out of her cage and put in a little film studio to create the software that I'm going to show you. Okay, so um, we want to, in the first lab, we want you to understand how we measure how, your thoughts, how fast you can make decisions. Okay, and the, one of the tasks we do to figure this out is we, we simply ask you to name the colors as fast as you can. So, it, and I, I won't go through the whole experiment, but I'm going to, I am going to ask you to um, make sure your mic's uh, muted, but I'm gonna ask you to read these out loud as fast as you can, okay? It should take you about 10 or 15 seconds. Oh, by the way, this is brown, green, red, blue, orange. I'm gonna call this orange, okay? So I'm gonna pretend you're all yelling at me and on your mark, get set, go. Orange, red, stop the clock. Okay, so if you had finished then, it'd probably take you about 10 seconds. Um, but now I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. I want you to read the color of the ink out loud. Okay, I know I can't hear you, but uh, when I move to the next screen, I want you to name the color of the ink as fast as you can. Here we go. Green. Orange, brown, blue. And what I'm hoping you're experiencing is the same thing that I experience every time I do that, that for some reason, when I want to say green, my brain has already processed the word orange, and sometimes I say grunge, and that's not right. You have to actually slow down long enough to be able to say the exact color word that you want. Okay, so I'm sure many of you have seen examples of the color word interference task before, and we have six different conditions, and when we're finished, we, we have reaction times for um, you know, how fast you can name the ink color all by itself and how fast you can name a word all by itself. But the critical conditions are um, this, the high bar here shows you that we're really slowed down when we have to name the ink color when the word doesn't match. Okay, so as a cognitive psychologist, I got my PhD at Waterloo studying children's arithmetic uh, and the processes involved in, in mathematics, learning mathematics. And um, so I, I have, um, I'm interested in how do we store information? How do we retrieve information? And we have a number of different experiments that highlight those. Okay, so that's the first lab. Uh, usually this is finished by the end of September. Now I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but I, I mentioned that to, to be a good critical thinker, you basically have to read someone's argument and then be able to evaluate that argument and see if you believe it's true or not. And so with, there are a bunch of different sub skills, uh, you know, recognizing when the author's making assumptions, um, you know, recognizing deductions and inferences. And these are all very subtle things um, that we, we test you on a 12 choice, 12 question, multiple choice task. And in some conditions, you, you don't just pick the best foil. 
you, you have to rank order them, okay? And so this is a little snippet of a study that we're doing because we think that we can measure people's ability to think critically better if we ask them to rank order these possible answers rather than just pick the best. So you learn about your own skills from uh, critical thinking in the, in the second lab. Um, and maybe you can develop those skills throughout Psych 100 as, as you read and hear and, and do some research on various journal articles. Okay, so in the second, in, in uh, actually the third lab now, we do a little task where all you have to say is whether this vertical line looks longer or smaller than this vertical line. And we have a few hundred trials, so we can actually find out how long does the right-hand line have to be for you to say it looks bigger. Okay, now you probably know that this is an illusion that people sometimes think that this, this, uh, that the long, that the, the line is longer than they think. So we, we can have you uh, run a little experiment, find out how we measure the size of your illusion. And we talk about why this illusion works based on our experience with um, the buildings we're walking around all the time. So um, that's the Mueller Liar Lab. We collect your reaction times and we can find out how big your illusion is using this experimental technique. Okay, so then we get into dream analysis. I have to say some of my students find that this one the most compelling. Uh, all we ask you to do is to write a story based on three random images. And um, then you interpret that story as if it was a dream. Okay, now we, there's a little bit more in, introduction and uh, processing involved, but essentially you learn that to, to analyze a dream, you should write it down in detail and then ask yourself like, how am I feeling and what's the plot line as the first start of dream analysis? And once you have that nailed down, then you do um, what we call a microanalysis for every component of your dream. Like let's say you dreamt about a funny key uh, or let's say you dreamt about a wedding or let's say you dreamt about you know, a car uh, being stopped by a rock on the road. We would ask you to free associate. Well, what, what, what does that symbolize to you? And so it's obviously a, an art form. It's hard to do hard science on dream analysis, but there, there are experts in the field and it's a really interesting uh, domain. Okay, so we end the first term in, I uh, guess the end of November, we're gonna introduce you to Sniffy. Sniffy, remember, is a UTM graduate. And uh, this is, um, we worked on this back in the 1990s and then every five years we've updated it. And recently Sniffy has now been put on uh, the app stores, uh, app and the Apple and Microsoft app stores. But essentially your job is to teach this little rodent who's wandering around in this cage to learn to press the bar that's right above the food hopper. And Sniffy, once he starts pressing, you can see on the cumulative record here how often Sniffy's pressing. In fact, Sniffy's getting 75 pieces of cheese every like seven minutes. So uh, we don't simulate all bodily functions, uh, but what you learn about with Sniffy is called behaviorism. And it's the basic idea that your behaviors are shaped by the outcomes of those behaviors. So if something happened, if you do something and then something good happens, you're going to do that behavior more often. Um, but if you do a, if you do some behavior and then something bad happens, like a punishment, then you're going to do those behaviors less often. Okay, so in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, behaviorism was the hot topic, and in fact, um, I'm interested in this because we we're we're building this simulation with an artificial intelligence background. Okay, so it's a little neural network that underlies this software, but you can learn the, the, you know, the, the basic principles of operant conditioning, how to train an animal to behave a certain way with Sniffy in the lab. Okay, so um, second term, you come back from the break and the first thing we do is we have you run a free recall and a recognition memory experiment. Okay, so that's really quite simply, can you remember the 20 words I'm, I'm about to say? And then I wait a little time and then you write down as many as you can and we score it. In the recognition task, we show you some images and then we wait a little bit of time and we show you a bunch of more images, some of which you saw and some of which you didn't. And we ask you to tell us which ones you saw before. Okay, so that's called a recognition study. I'm really, really proud of our lab seven. We, we have a number of people in our department who are very interested in meditation effects. And uh, both in terms of like handling stress and police forcing, uh, even 
Some of us are interested in how meditation can be very helpful in terms of uh, depression and then other anxiety disorders. So I'll, I'll show you a little experiment uh, that we do with psychology. We teach you how to meditate and we, and we measure your, your attention and your memory before you meditate and after you meditate. Now, I probably won't get the time to go through all of these things with you. And Deborah, please keep an eye on my time for me. You know what, Dr. Graham, I was just gonna jump in there. Okay, well, excellent. Well, that's a, that's a good spot for me to stop. But there's so much on this list that looks absolutely amazing to me. Well, you, you wouldn't believe how amazing it is. Like I'll just finish my slideshow by uh, skipping through it like this. Um, often when I do the March break, I have the whole audience, all 80 of you meditating for a few minutes. And, um, but today we won't have time to do that. So I'm gonna stop there and say, thank you very much. And please come and take Psych 100 at UTM because we have a lot of fun. That was, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Graham. Now we still have Jody and Dr. Graham in, in the background here, if there are any questions. Now, Jody, if, if you could come back on for a second because I have a very specific question for you. If I, if I may. You go ahead, Deborah. Now, let me give you the scenario. If I am a student who has taken AP or maybe IB in high school, I understand that if I take the exams, I could have transfer credit. Right. Now, would I be able to have transfer credit for Psych 100? Yep, for sure. So you will get it. So that's a benefit to you. You're coming in with credits. You're mm -hmm. coming in so you can then take, that is equivalent to our Psych 100. So you could then, you would start your year taking second year courses. Mm -hmm. so the only thing, the only negative part to that is you miss out in our Psych 100 and working with Dr. Jeff and Dr. Dr. Graham. Exactly. So Look again, what we just saw, right? Right, right. So we, we you know, we're one of the only programs left in uh, Canada that offers Psych 100 with a lab component. So we, we really uh, proud of our Psych 100 course because we're still offering those, what, what Jeff has actually just showed everybody. It's very fun, they're very interactive. Uh, and you start learning about yourself and start, uh, you know, Sniffy's really fun too. We're very proud of Sniffy. That's wonderful. So yes, definitely it is equivalent and that's the choice that you make. You, you're, you know, you, we don't want to hold you back and we don't, you will still have a great experience coming in having that as a prerequisite, you can then take the second year courses, you would just start your second year courses. So your first course, you know, your courses would be like introduction to developmental psychology. So that might be one lecture in Psych 100, that will be a full class for you that you're just learning introduction to developmental. So, and you will have the background as long as you have the high school prerequisites and you did do the psychology, you will have the background and you will be able to succeed. Yeah, like I said, the only downfall is to, to miss out having that first year experience that the other students will have. And I'm hoping that maybe Alicia, if you haven't already, if you could go into the chat and maybe put up the academic calendar and program plans for psychology in the chat. So then a student could see what the courses are they could possibly take in second year. Thank you so much, Jody. Great. Now we're gonna change gears, everybody. We're going to switch up gears and now we're going to speak with current students in psychology. I do have a student panel who's joined me. Now I've got Joyce. I have Vanessa. Joyce, Vanessa, are you there? And Sophia is there. Yeah. There we, excellent. I see everybody. How's everybody doing this evening? I'm doing fabulous. So doing ex good. <laughs> wonderful. So excited to hear about your experiences. So Joyce, can you first start and tell us about yourself? Sure. Um, so I'm Joyce Ann, but I usually go by Annie, um, but I'll turn around if you call me Joyce Ann anyway. <laughs> and I'm currently in my fifth year and I'm doing a psych specialist with a criminology major. And I'm currently in my fifth year. Um, fun fact about me is that I love UTM so much that even though I completed all my credits for last, last year, I came back just to do the thesis course uh, just because I really love the psychology uh, department and research component into it. And I wanted to see how it kind of portrays before I go into grad school. So yeah, that's me. <laughs> that makes perfect sense to me. 
<laughs> no argument here. I can understand where you're going to come back to UTM. Sophia, what about you? Tell us about yourself. Hi, uh, so I'm Sophie and I'm in my fourth year, also in the psychology program. Like Joyce, I'm doing a psychology specialist. I'm not quite as ambitious as her. I'm doing a biology minor, not a major. Um, yeah, I've been involved in a lot of the research at UTM as well as the practicum. So any questions about that, let me know. And I'm excited to speak with all of you and hopefully answer some questions. Very exciting. And Vanessa, tell us about yourself. So um, I'm also in my fifth year of undergrad. Um, just like uh, Joyce, I also uh, wanted to come back just to do research. I also, I took regular courses as well, but the main goal was to do research. Um, I'm a double major in psychology and health science. Um, that wasn't the original plan, but that's where I am now. And uh, I absolutely love psychology. I My goal is to be a professor in psychology. So that's and that's where we're setting the bar with UTM. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Now, Vanessa, I just have to go back. You were saying that you, you want to be a, a professor. It, it brings me to the question about faculty members. Now, we saw Dr. Graham. He sounds quite knowledgeable to me. Sounds like an excellent experience. But what about the other faculty members in psychology? Like uh, the, my experience with my professors? Mm -hmm. I haven't had one bad experience and I'm not, I know you might be, oh my gosh, she's just saying that. I honestly can speak for every psychology professor I've come into contact with has been great. They've all been accommodating, especially, you know, as many people do, um, you know, you go through trials and, and adversity throughout your, it, that's how life is. And thankfully the professors I had throughout my years in, in university were accommodating. So I never ended up getting a bad mark or anything like that. So that was, that was great. And also I, a lot of the faculty members, especially if you just ask, they're very, well, they're like, yeah, come help me. If you want to do research, come great. Awesome. Yeah. So they're very, everybody's very welcoming. I'd be, um, psychology department is amazing. Wonderful. And Annie, I'm going to call you Annie. Mm -hmm. Annie, did you ever take advantage of any office hours that the faculty members may have had and what came out of that? Yeah, definitely. Um, to be honest, like when I first came to UTM, I didn't do office hours at all because it was very like scary to me um, <laughs> talking to a professor one-on-one. -on -one. But as I kind of grew uh, wiser, I will say, <laughs> I started going to office hours and I really learned that like you get closer with your professors throughout that way, especially for like big lectures, because like Psych 100, it's quite a big class. But honestly, like Professor Dax is very like nice. Uh, he's very open during his office hours and like he's, ah, he's more willing to like talk about like stuff during his office hours because he has the time. And truthfully, like, um, when I have attended office hours, that's also how, as Vanessa kind of alluded into, that's how I got into my research opportunities <laughs> personally. I would ask the professors that I kind of work close with um, and went to their office hours with if they'd be willing to take me up on say my thesis. And that's how I kind of got into those like opportunities. So I highly recommend it even though it's a little scary sometimes. <laughs> it's so important to just take that leap right just take exactly. that what's the what's the worst that's going to happen exactly. nothing you end up in somebody's lab i say you take the leap now sophie i i have a question for you um i want you to think back ah, back to first year can you tell me what did you find to be the biggest difference between first year second year third year fourth year what's the biggest like how did it how did it play out for you what's the biggest differences you noticed that's a good question um 
I think for personal reasons, like I had biology and chemistry in the beginning, and then I moved more towards psychology. So obviously that created some major differences just because I changed my route a little bit. But more generally, I think that you kind of get to explore your interests more and more as you progress towards fourth year. So in first year, you're kind of sampling a little bit of everything in Psych 100. In second year, you know, each lecture from Psych 100 becomes its own class. So you're getting more in depth. And then each lecture from those classes eventually becomes its own class in third and fourth year. And by fourth year, you know, you're conducting your own research if that's what you're interested in. You're taking special topics courses where sometimes, you know, you're even giving a lecture in the course if that's something that interests you. So really it is getting to explore your interests more and more and more as you progress. That's wonderful. And Sophie, I just want to ask you a, another, another question. <laughs> now, Annie, she alluded to being a little bit nervous first approaching faculty members. Now, but what about other students? I want you to think back, back to first year, approaching other students in your program of study. What was that like for you? Uh, good question. So I met a lot of people actually who were in years ahead of me through the labs that I volunteered in, as well as through jobs that I had on campus. So I've worked a lot at the Academic Skills Center and I was able to meet a lot of students who were also in my program there. Um, but I also found it was very, very easy to meet people and make friends once I entered my second year and I was in those smaller psychology courses. Everyone was very friendly. Uh, we usually had a group chat going where we would form study groups and study together. So it was pretty easy to make connections with other students. That's wonderful. And Vanessa, I think that you have something that you could share about this social aspect of the psychology program. I... I, Vanessa's, Vanessa's a little, she's out of sync, but I can hear you, Vanessa. Okay. okay, so my, let me get this. My uh, laptop is being a little wonky, so I, that's why of you Of course it is, me. naturally. Um, but the social aspect, um, so one of the things I am, very, very fond of is uh, the Psychology Association of Undergraduate Students at Arendelle. I got involved in my fourth year um, and I ended up being the president of PAWS this year uh, in my fifth year. It is one of the most rewarding experiences I have ever had in the five years, I would say even going back into like, since I was 14, like through high school to university. Um, and just to, I, I want to let you all know this. I this year I've imp implemented a mentorship program into uh, that, that into pause. It, that's sorry, the acronym pause is. Uh, it's just easier to say that. I've implemented a mentorship program so that first years can connect with upper year students and kind of get the rundown of what it's really like in the later years of psychology. And the best part is because of COVID, especially this year, a lot of students. Um, in first year, they didn't get the experience that you would if you were first year pre-COVID. Um, so that was kind of the, the bigger goal as well. Um, once you get back onto campus or if there's some sort of hybrid that happens this fall or whatever, whichever way school looks this year, um, I wanted to make sure that students were prepared and they were given the, the proper uh, tools because I didn't have that. And that was something that I wish I, I had coming into UTM, I wouldn't have made certain decisions and I would have made other decisions earlier and all that fun stuff. Mentorship is so important in, in these decision-making times, aren't they? Now, Annie, I, I now want to ask you about getting involved, getting involved in your psychology program or just as a UTM student, were there any other clubs or associations that you were a part of? Yeah, um, to be honest, like I was, I'm the student who really loves to get involved. So I've been a part of like a lot of clubs and societies, including PAWS actually, um, last year, I think. <laughs> so yeah, like honestly, like um, to me, there's no limitation, even though you're a psychology student, I was, the vice president for the pre-med club. So like, in my opinion, there's really like no limitation as to your program and like what position you want in any club or society. 
actually in a society might be a little difficult. <laughs> you might need to win a program, <laughs> but especially for clubs, definitely for clubs, you don't have to be like a specific program. Um, I think for the most part, like clubs, like different clubs um, generally have like different uh, events that you can participate in. And to be honest, like I find them like the most fun. Like uh, some, I've been a part of some clubs that will have like culture night and then some clubs will have like uh, art art night. And um, a current club I'm in, um, Psychox actually just holds like psychology discussions surrounding any any topic that you want that's revolving psychology. So it can even, even be like video games and psychology. It's that way. And you can like talk about anything you want basically as long as it's a little bit relatable to psychology <laughs> so i definitely like honestly i would truly recommend like clubs if you want to have like a very social aspect into your university career because i found them like the most fun and rewarding and personally like when i talk to like um employers a lot of the times they bring up that i was a part of this club because i had this position and I can exemplify that I can do this thing because I've had this position before. For instance, like I can I can say that I've hold I've held like events before. I've created events before because that was my task as like um, as an event coordinator before. So it's like definitely like not just like resume building up, but also very fun in my opinion. That's that is absolutely amazing and this whole part we're talking about this social aspect because this is your network right mm -hmm. faculty members your your fellow students are a huge part of your network and these are relationships you're going to be developing essentially for life now i now have to ask the question you're either in fourth year or fifth year i'm wondering what is it that you're planning on doing after you graduate vanessa what is it what's your plan what do you what do you have going on? What are you thinking about? I actually this is kind of perfect, uh, perfect question for me. Um, and I'm saying this because I don't want anybody to feel like rejection stops them. Um, my plan, like I said earlier, is I want to be a professor. That's going to take years and years and years and lots of education, lots of experience. So it's not just a direct, you know, get out of school, let's go. But part of that is getting a master's degree and eventually a PhD and eventually postdocs and, and all that education, all that fun stuff. But this year, unfortunately, I did not get accepted to any of the grad schools I applied to. And, you know, at first it was one of those things where I was like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? What's next year gonna do? My whole life has been five, not my whole life, the last five years of my life have been university and I'm so used to how UTM runs and what am I gonna do? Just like when you come out of high school and you're like, how's university work? because you're, you, don't, you just don't know, it's a, it's a culture shock. Um, but just going back, like, it's about, I figured it out. There's many different other opportunities that aren't just, you know, your path doesn't necessarily have to be like this. My path, I'm going to Humber next year for a year just to, to do a graduate program. And then I'm gonna reapply next year and hopefully get back in um, or get in next year, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, that's that's my plan. The goal, the end goal is professor, but my current goal right now is to just do well, finish up the last few weeks of my undergrad, go to Humber, do well in Humber, and hopefully, if the cards are right, get back and get into grad school next year. You um, that is an excellent thing to bring up, Vanessa. The fact that it's not always a straight line to where it is that you want to go. Sometimes you're going to be taking a detour, but I honestly think that detour you're going to be taking is going to be so valuable. Wonderful, Vanessa. Sophie, what about you? What What do you, and you know, the other thing, Sophie, I, I also, I kind of want to talk about what you're doing there for research as well. So if you could tell us, what is it that you want to do after you graduate and what are you doing for research? Yeah, sure. Um, so just one point to add to what Vanessa said, I feel like those faculty connections are great because I was talking to a faculty member the other day. He's a professor now, super successful. And he told me it took him three times to get into grad school. So yeah, you know, you can definitely still get there and I'm sure you're on track. 
Uh, but yeah, about research. So my current research is predominantly at SickKids. So that's kind of one of the benefits to being at U of T is you have those hospital connections. So even though my honors thesis is counting towards a UTM credit, I'm working with a psychiatrist at SickKids, which is really great. So I've had access to clinical populations. So these are mostly adolescents who have depression and they are part of an outpatient clinic. And what we're looking at is essentially how their psychiatric disease can eventually predict later onset of cardiovascular disease. And we're looking at different mechanisms. So for example, chronic inflammation, and we're also looking at insulin resistance, the development of type two diabetes, hypertension. So it's very much health psychology and clinical, which is something I'm super interested in. And then as for future plans, I do want to continue with research. I'm hoping to attend graduate school eventually, but I'm gonna be taking a year off in between to work as a research coordinator. So I'm trying to venture a little more into adult research instead of uh, pediatric. Uh, so I'm hoping to be working with a professor at Ryerson and we're doing an international study of the convergence of gambling disorder and gaming disorders. So gaming not recognized in the DSM yet, but yeah, that's essentially what we're gonna be looking at in the next year. That's marvelous. And I appreciate that you may be going to a different institution in order to do that. I certainly appreciate that. But that's all about this networking thing, right? Exactly. That's how I made those connections through you. Wonderful. Now, Annie, you know, I'm going to ask you the same question. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, in my overall like plan plan, I definitely wanted to become a psychologist, um, but I definitely want it to be heavily based on, um, or I definitely want to be heavily like conduct research as well, because that's my main, like, I would say joy in life, even though when I'm doing certain things of research, it doesn't feel like it, it feels really taxing, but I really love the outcome of it. So I would love to pursue a PhD on it. And um, similarly to Vanessa and Sophie, um, I'll likely want to do, I tried out for one grad school this year and I haven't got anything back yet, but I would ideally like to do something outside in the workforce first to kind of just really grab a hold as to whether I really want this or not. And um, a great point that Vanessa and somewhat Sophie also brought up is that sometimes um, life you kind of have to take it slowly and that's actually something I learned from like my uh, pr Professor Kamaranetsky, who's my thesis advisor, but also the professor I kind of went into for a uh, summer abroad. Um, he really kind of pushes for like, I would say like why I love most of UTM is professors like Professor Kamaranetsky, because he really like pushed me to kind of say, it's fine if it doesn't happen this year. There's always like a chance for next year. And like, as a student with like a disability, I feel like I always have to like show something for it. And when I get like rejected, sometimes it feels like it's on me rather than like, it's not, it's just for not this year. So I definitely like love hearing that from him. And as Vanessa like kind of reiterate again and again, is that it, might just not be this year it can happen like the next years it's completely fine and i might even be even happier because i did something else for the next following years right and going straight into it but yeah <laughs> that encouragement is absolutely amazing and i've heard that about our faculty members as well that they're very encouraging and that when you start having those conversations with them they have ideas uh, knowledge things that you had no idea existed and they also know other professors at other institutions am i correct most certainly now i have to ask this question you're all at utm why why did you come to why did you come to utm vanessa why did you come to utm I will give you the honest, honest answer first, and then the other answers as well. I live 10 minutes away from here. So I was like, UFT, 10 minutes commute, perfect. That was the one of the, the main things for me. It was just close. But also UFT, like Jody mentioned earlier, has I could get a bachelor's of science. That was the goal. I love science and and the program I applied into was life sciences. At the time, there was no direct neuroscience stream um, at UCM. 
this is 2016, so it's just right, really new. But um, at the time there was no neuroscience. So I was like, well, I'll do life sciences. And I'll be honest with you, my actual plan was I want to be a, um, I want to be double major in bio and chemistry. And uh, I took, I'm not trying to scare anybody, I took first year chemistry and I realized I can't do this at higher levels. So I took psychology over the summer actually. So I didn't even get the full year experience. I did it over six weeks. Um, best decision I ever made. But um, yeah, that was the, I chose UTM because it was close and I felt like I could work with what UTM was offering. And I didn't, I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, a lot of people, I, th I think my biggest, biggest advice to anybody is when you get into university, you're kind of star starstruck. You're like, wow, this lecture hall is so big and I'm not used to learning like this. How do I take notes? Get involved in any way, shape, or form. It does not have to be in research. There's so many other things that you can do on campus that are not research-based. And there's not just societies. Also, there's clubs and societies. You can be part of so many things. And it's not even just for the social aspect. It's the fact that the more you're, you're tied to the university, I'll give you an example. If you would have met me three years ago, second year, I would have been like, I'll transfer schools, who cares? But now that I've kind of tied myself to, it's not just going to school, learning, and then leaving. And I've kind of tied myself to the, the campus. I'm really sad that I can't go back next year. And I don't know, like, if I could go and finish my education all the way through at UTM and then be employed at UTM, that would be A plus. But that's fortunately not what's going to happen. But yeah, I see everybody nodding, but like that's that's how that's how I feel about it. You know, I, I really recommend getting involved in whichever way you can. Don't stress yourself out because that's not good either. First year is not hard, but when you're not used to it, it's it can be a little daunting. Um, and I actually did see in the Q and A, what do you do if you're nervous? Just go, just do it, just start. It those nerves will be gone. Just I remember when I went to Frosh, I was like, I don't know what to do here. It's fine. It'll 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 go away. Just get in there, sit yourself in a seat. Hopefully this is COVID doesn't stop this, but or sit yourself in your bed with the zoom on and just immerse yourself into the experience and really take as much as you can because these years will go by really fast. Really that's, really fast. That's amazing. And also now, Vanessa, you brought up the resource of, of the academic skills center. And I'm just wondering, did anybody else take advantage of that resource or any other type of resource that's available at UTM to help them through? Annie, I see you shaking your head. Tell me. Yeah, I actually use them really frequently. <laughs> I use them almost like in a, I don't want to say like bi-weekly, but definitely like every time I have like a paper due, I'm like, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna like book them real quick, especially because like sometimes spots fill up fast. Um, I will say that they are so like helpful because like, to be honest, like um, when I was, when I was starting off uh, psychology, I wasn't the best student. I literally met the most minimum requirement you can get for the psychology major. And I was like, I even wondered uh, if I was like going into psychology for there because um, I would do tests pretty well, but my papers would like be lacking so badly. Even like in short answers, my papers would be lacking. But after like I went into the academic skill center uh, quite frequently, I started to realize what my mistakes were um, to the point that like it's been, <laughs> it's been habitual. It's just been ingrained in my brain. And so like I would make a paper and I'd be like, oh, this sounds really good. But then like sometimes, you know when you read so much of your paper that you're like this sounds amazing but then like you get a mark back and you're like why did I get a 60 but then you read it again and you're like I I understand why I got that 60 now that's that definitely happened quite a lot during my first to like second year but after like going to the um, academic skill center like they really kind of show you I wouldn't say just like grammatical errors and stuff like that but they really show you like um where you can like emphasize your point and say like this would this paragraph would be better situated before or after this and kind of like ensuring that you elaborate enough in your own ideas and not just providing like 
evidence one by one because that's what I used to do. I thought you just had to like point by point, this is my evidence and not really give like an elaboration as to why, which is why like I really loved them. I was like, I, I've gotten compliments now for my writing and it still feels like I'm an imposter <laughs> into it because like I, it's been like so many years where my writing has been like my lacking of my grades. So now that I'm getting compliments in it, it feels really like weird. But I highly recommend it. I, I'm not even joking, especially since they're online now. I highly recommend it. Sometimes you don't even have to like see them. They just do it for you. And you just can like edit it on your own time. Sorry, highly, highly recommend it. But you know what's funny is that's the whole point of going to university, <laughs> right? That's the whole point. People are thinking to themselves, oh, maybe I, I can't do this or, or how did I get this grade or, Going to university is about improvement. It's about getting better at what you're doing. Now, we've come to the end. I know it's hard to believe. We've come to the end. I really, truly want to thank you, Annie, also known as Joyce Annie. Sophie, I want to thank you. Thank you so much. Vanessa, thank you again. And I also want to thank Jody. And I want to thank Dr. Graham as well. Thank you so much, Jody and Dr. Graham. And I also want to thank Alicia for keeping an eye on the chat for me. And honestly, if you have any questions at all, Jody is the expert, as I had mentioned to you before, and she would be more than willing to answer any questions you have about psychology and contact us in admissions if you have any questions about admissions as well. And thank you again, everyone, and have a wonderful evening everyone. Bye.